What's poppin' nights? It's Onokage, otherwise known as the King, and let's talk about that Boruto episode, can we? Because, man, this arc was just getting good, and then they had to ruin it with the fallen action and the ending. Yes, we were this close. I mean, oh my god, hey, look, everybody, oh. another wannabe anime tuber oh. complaining about Boruto. Oh my god, that hurts. I guess what, you're gonna complain about Sakura next? Well, yeah, I have this whole thing about Sakura coming up pretty soon. Actually. And nobody cares! Okay, well, that's just hurtful. And nobody asks! And this is my life. <laughs> Whoa. I'm about to go call me a brick, crushing your whole little shit. Whoa. Mine's so cold, I fill up on car with the blow. Now I'm like, Whoa. she a brick on the low. Now she wanna suck on my toes. And I'm like, Whoa. Okay, but in all seriousness, I can understand that somebody talking trash about an anime that might be your favorite anime can come off as insensitive and hurtful. However, this episode, this arc in general, got me, I won't say heated. It got me annoyed because I'm not going to spoil it for you. I do think you should watch this arc. Um, the episodes will be right here listed for you it's just so that you can find them pretty easy because I think these episodes are canon to the story of Boruto. Like, I don't think that they're filler, which means the Seven Ninjas Swordsman episode from way back when, I think they're canon too now and not filler. So, Jesus Christ, those lame episodes are now canon as well. Hopefully they're just filler, and this is just a continuation of that filler arc. Because Naruto did that too. But I can't see these arcs being filler because of the way they ended. <coughs> Broto's character developed. I mean, developed really, really far. He's at the level where Naruto was, not power-wise, mentally. He's at the mental capacity of Naruto after fighting pain, which means these events have significance to the story. My voice just cracked. Oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, that means that these episodes are most likely canon. And with that being said, I feel more justified to be as irritated or disappointed. Disappointed is a more accurate word. To be as disappointed as I am with this latest arc because the rehashing old ideas but they're doing it in a way that belittles the significance of a change in a character. Let me explain. Boruto now has the same mental thought process that Naruto had after fighting pain. And we all know what it took to get Naruto to that point. It was the, at the time, what we thought was the death of Kakashi. And we only thought Kakashi died because they had just killed Jiraiya. I mean, literally. What the fuck, man? That whole arc was an emotional train wreck for every anime-only fan, as well as manga fans. That arc was heavy. And I mean heavy. 80% of the lives in the Leaf Village were just snuffed out. I mean, gone finito. It was at the point where Sakura had to buckle down and use the greatest weapon in her arsenal. Naruto's name. And when Naruto got there, he was pissed. I mean, seeing the death and destruction firsthand, having to live in that chaos, having to experience that pain, we felt it alongside Naruto. So when it got to the breaking point and Hinata jumped in to defend him, and we thought she died as well. So alongside Naruto, at that moment, we all collectively lost our shit. We wanted pain to die. We wanted pain to suffer. And Naruto was giving him the hands. <laughs> but Naruto knew that this rage, this wasn't him. That killing pain it wouldn't make him feel any better. And this realization came after he remembered the lessons that he learned from Jiraiya and the messages that Jiraiya hid in his books. And that message was that this hatred, this anger, this pain would only last as long as he lets it sit in his heart. So he had to let it go. And through that, he accepted the idea of talking to the person that killed everyone he loved. Naruto 
at that moment had the power to kill pain, to end everything. But he chose to try to learn to understand him, to accept him, so that the violence can finally end, so that he can reach peace. That is his new mentality, to fight for peace rather than just victory. And with this new mentality of taking pain and turning it to progress, to prosperity, he was rewarded by finally, finally getting the recognition that he deserves for everything he's done for the Leaf Village. Naruto finally got cheers. He finally was ignored and hated. He was loved. But it came at a cost. The person who believed in him first, outside from the ramen guy, because we all know he was A1 from day one, but Jiraiya, his master, his father figure, the person who taught him so many things about the world, is still dead. He will never see Naruto again. He will never see Naruto become Okage. He will never see Naruto start a family. He will never be able just to give Naruto another hug or share a popsicle with him again. This was the cost of Naruto accepting this new mentality, learning to fight for peace. But let's talk about Boruto real quick, because this is the mentality change that Boruto has come to now. And the standard for this mentality change is here, with all this pain, bigoty stuff. Yeah, Boruto went through some stuff too in this arc. And I'm not going to belittle what he went through. When you kill a man and then his son comes up to you and tells you that you killed my father, that's some heavy stuff that you got to deal with and unpack at some point in your life. But Boruto chose to do this all during the middle of a fucking war between two rivaling factions that he does not truly have a stake in. And I truly mean that. He had no stake in any of this. Throughout all of this arc, Boruto was simply reactionary. People attacked him and he defended himself. And somehow... He was made to be the bad guy through all this. Yes, I understand that the anime was trying to humanize the Funada. And I get that. I really do. But they made every character so goddamn stupid. Except for Boontan and Kawaki. They were great this entire arc and you can't tell me otherwise. But let's talk about the worst characters. That being Siren and Funamushi. These two, single-handedly, are the cause of everything wrong with this arc. Siren, for example, is a dumber person than I am. Her plan was to get her little brother, Ikidai, to leave with her so that he could fight alongside them in the war against the Mist. Cool, right? However, Ikidai wanted to stay and build boats. She blamed Boruto for this, a guy that Ikidai has known for two days. So she planned to kill Boruto for this and blame it on the enemy so that Ikidai will be more convinced to fight for their side. Makes sense, right? And Boruto defended himself. Makes sense, right? Okay. So, Boruto used lightning chakra on her, and for some reason, for the first time in the anime, it had semi-realistic effects, where her body was shutting down afterwards. <laughs> okay, it's not funny. It's not, it's not funny. But, it's like the first time being electrocuted in an anime actually had the effects of being electrocuted in real life. It's weird. <laughs> but she was dying. And because of that, Ikidai now wanted to fight for the Funado. Sweet. That was his reason to joining. His sister dying. And when he found out it was Boruto, that convinced Ikidai to change. However, there's another person who was really attached to Siren. That being Funamushi, the actual worst character in this arc. Funamushi is a simp. That is his character. And that is all his character is. And the worst part, I'm pretty sure Siren is not 18. And he already has a child with another woman. And why am I focusing on the simp part? Oh, well, that's actually simple. <laughs> Get the little joke there. It's because while he's on screen, that's all his character is about. His child was never brought up. His rule against killing children that were uninvolved was never brought up. All we saw about this character was that he was deranged. He solely focused 
on killing Boruto and Kagura only because they were involved in his e-girl having to cancel her tier 3 subscriptions. And that's it. That was his entire character. He was obsessed with killing one child, which he's supposed to be against doing, and Kagura. Because they defended themselves. That's it. Later we find out that he didn't kill Dinky and Iwabi because they were children. So why was he going after Boruto so heavy? And I really mean heavy. It was an obsession. He was deranged in his ploy to kill them, refusing his leader's orders until Boruto was dead. That was his character. And now we're supposed to feel sympathy for that character because he had a kid? This is supposed to be the big turning point for Naruto. However, all I can think is, man, fuck that kid. Man, fuck them kids, bro. Yo daddy's dead, and you know what, little bitch? He deserved to die. I hope he's rotting in hell. I hope he's in a hot tub full of lemonade with salt and barbed wire. And I'm supposed to feel sad for your little ass. Get the fuck. Why are you still here? And don't get me started on the Ikadai and Boruto on the boat moment. Oh, I'll give you my life to end this war. Bro, what? My thoughts on Ikadai is that he should have been introduced to this arc way sooner so that we as an audience and fan base could have gotten to know his character a bit more. All I know about the kid is that he wanted to build boats and he didn't feel like he fit in with his family. And the real big problem is... I loved his design. I thought he looked so cool. I thought all of the Funado looked really cool. Now think about how much cooler it would have been if Siren was Funamushi's wife and the little shit was their kid. And that would have been a much more interesting dynamic because now Funamushi has a reason to be so fucking obsessed. They almost killed his wife. They killed the mother of his son. Any man would lose his mind. And I get that they were trying to keep the reveal of him having a child under rats. So, how about this? Throughout the whole time where they're fighting, he's holding on to a locket. He has tears in his eyes, and he's using his tears as weapons at times. And then the moment where he finally dies, he falls limp to the ground. And his hand opens up, revealing a locket. And in that locket is a family portrait. Yes, it's cheesy! But it shows that the character has some level of humanity in his last moments. I mean, why would I care about this dude after his death? I really hate Funamushi. He's such a bad character. And the worst part is this arc had so many good moments. The death of Kagura, I did not see that coming. Kagura, I thought was a filler character, but turned out not to be. And his death had some significance. It could have been important. It showed that Boruto was seeking revenge, but he still was just defending himself because Funamushi relentlessly attacked them because of his obsession with Siren. And through that, we got the end of this arc, episode 255, where Boruto's talking about his new ideals of fighting peace that really wasn't earned, but it doesn't matter. I love the fact that Kawaki was challenging his ideals. Kawaki is a dude that's lived a life really similar to Naruto mixed with Sasuke, but with a lot more abuse. And of course, he's not going to just accept the fact that you can just lay down and let the other side will just stop fighting for you. He's had to deal with not being able to fight back for years. And just taking that abuse. So, why would a character who's had to go through all that just accept Boruto's mentality so easily? And also, what was the animation during that fight? Are you serious?
I really mean that. Kawaki is a character that is legitimately built up to challenge Naruto's ideals of peace. He is reluctantly accepting them because they're kind, they're warm. But when it's from Boruto's mouth, when they sound so naive, when they sound so arrogant, it is his job to challenge those ideals with his realistic worldview. And Naruto is just watching to see his son's resolve. And I say sons because Naruto and because Kawa- Boruto and Kawaki are both his kids, and I love that fact. But he wants to see their resolve. He's not going to intervene. He's letting his kids be their own people. And through that, I really thought Kawaki was going to have a chance to really say what was on his mind. But he just gives up because he was touched by Boruto's message. I get that. His message is so much similar to Naruto's and Kawaki just believes in Naruto. However, I know he would challenge that. He would go a little bit deeper into it. So why didn't he? Even throughout the ending, we didn't get an explanation. Kawaki just wanted to get food. And I don't know. I really hope that we get a deeper dive into this because I don't. I, I want to see why Kawaki accepts this notion of peace. Because that's just not in his character to, sit, to lie on his back and accept it, you know? This has been a lot of scatterbrained talking and barely any of it was a review. So I'm going to just call it the first impressions of this arc. Godly. It was supposed to be a review of this episode 255, but it, it wasn't. <laughs> it really wasn't. But I think that's the biggest problem. This arc could have been good. And this episode was the final chance for them to turn it around. To make it about something. They should have had another episode where they just go more into Kawaki's ideals on this. Because, again, he and Boruto's character are going on this really parallel line, perpendicular line with each other. Where they're crossing. And that point where they meet in the middle is supposed to be the point of contention for these two characters. To decide whether they're going to go on the same path or in opposite directions. And where that in media's res intro to the anime of Boruto shows us is that they do go in opposite directions. At what point does that happen? And why didn't Boruto get his scar in the episode where he was on the boat offering up his life? That would have been great narrative fulfillment. And I gotta go before I get too worked up. Hey, let me know if y'all want more of these. Um, let me know if you want a whole review of the Boruto series because I've been thinking of rewatching some of the earlier episodes to see if I really like this show or do I just want to watch Cliff Notes at this point because this latest arc really got me thinking some type of way and I really need the advice. So let me know if you like this stuff. I'll start reviewing anime and stuff like that and also recommend some anime for me to watch because uh, I need those. I need more what-if ideas, so recommend some animes for me to watch. Um, your what-if ideas in the comments and in the Discord have been awesome. I've been reading through them. I haven't responded to them all because I've just been super busy lately. Had went to an interview today. Um, just finished the episode for uh, what if the Uzum, uh, what if Boruto, Goku and Vegeta train Naruto and Sasuke in Boruto world. Um, yeah, there's been a lot happening and it's been wild. But for now, I love you all. And for peace and for love. Oh no. Kage out. Peace. Nobody speak, nobody get choked. If you run the home, it's gonna get smoked. No time for the lame ass jokes. I'm the goat. You a gringo when that story's been told. I make money moves controlling every view. Oh no. You got hella food, but no one's helping you. What's wrong? Now you on your own, you really want to smoke. Oh no. Chico really done it. Talking crazy, I yeah. may go post though. Yeah. Always trouble when they go too far. Yeah. Nobody messing me familiar. Ah. Father, father.